Welcome, and thank you for tuning in to ESG Talks, a KBRA podcast series focusing on environmental, social, and governance, ESG. This podcast series highlights various ESG hot topics and includes commentary from prominent voices within the ESG community. In this episode of ESG Talks, Andrea Torres Villanueva, an associate on KBRA's ESG team, interviews Gordon Kerr, Managing Director and KBRA's Head of European Research. Gordon was in Glasgow, Scotland for the 26th session of the Conference of the Parties, COP26, and discusses with Andrea key takeaways from this year's event. Hi, everyone. This is Andrea Torres Villanueva from KBRA's ESG team. I'm happy to be joined by Gordon Kerr, KBRA's Head of European Research. So thanks, Gordon, for coming on to tell us about your experience in Glasgow. COP26 just ended, and here at KBRA, we were monitoring the proceedings because of the importance of country commitments on international climate investment and the low-carbon transition worldwide. So Gordon, was this your first time attending a COP? Can you describe the energy surrounding the event? There were many headlines about climate activism and demonstration happening around the event, especially by young people. Yeah, it was my first time attending a COP, so I don't really have anything to compare it to. But I would say while there was some, I guess, some concern and activism associated with what has been going on and the, the lack of presence of China and Russia, for example, overall, it felt like there was a really positive energy to the conference. Yes, there were challenges and there are challenges ahead. But overall, the atmosphere was one of sort of a constructive development. So actually recognizing that there needs to be change and people working towards how to get there. Overall, I would say it was a challenging atmosphere, but one that was uh, done constructively. And I'm sure it was fascinating to witness like world leaders, NGOs, corporate executives coming together in the pursuit of global climate action. So Gordon, we recently published a key takeaways piece on COP26, which our audience can find on our ESG page at esg.kbra.com. But can you summarize some notable achievements that happened during the event? Yeah, sure. I think one of the major ones was the inclusion of fossil fuels in the text of the final agreement, which was just done for the first time. Countries will revise their climate commitments at the end of next year which sped up the original deadline of 2025, which was part of the Paris Agreement. And I think one of the main headlines was actually the Global Methane Pledge, which will cut emissions by 30% by 2030, which was a very positive initiative that will help to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And this was started in partnership between the US and Europe, and now over 100 countries have signed on, which represents about 70% of the global economy. Again, as I mentioned earlier, the lack of China and Russia being president at the conference may have influenced this, but they are to sign up as well. They are in particular Russia, major uh, contributors the, on the methane side, and India as well has yet to sign. So overall, I would say it's a, it's a positive step, but again, there are still remain a, a few challenges to, to overcome. Yeah, thanks for this summary. And though much of of COP26 was focused on the public sector, there was also much discussion on the role of the private sector in in international climate mitigation. So finance was just one theme at COP26, but what was the sentiment around that topic? I would say it it was very positive. So while there is a large focus on COP about the country commitments and, and what governments are doing, I would say the real positive out of this event was that there is a real drive in the private sector and their involvement is really key to progress going forward. You know, there is much done in terms of technology and innovation and plenty of corporates coming forward with net zero commitments, which was highlighted throughout the event. Private sector investment is really a key part of achieving the global climate commitments. And and I would say that one thing that even just broadly speaking, in terms of my experience with regards to the, you know, coming from the financial industry, the financial community is really increasingly focused on sustainability. And this has accelerated over the past one to two years. For example, Mark Carney brought forward that 450 firms representing 130 trillion in assets have signed on to the Net Zero Banking Alliance which is an initiative under the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero. So the market is really taking this on board and really making a commitment to move forward. 
But those speaking in the formal UN negotiations in the blue zone and the green zone, there were discussions which were open to the public, to the business community. They highlighted the real importance of private and public sector to mobilize money towards limiting global temperature rise. There is some strong debate about whether finance can really help achieve those carbon ambitions. Uh, there was a lot of debate around the pricing of carbon, for example, or you know, will we see a, a real end to, there was also a relatively heated debate about whether or not we would actually see an end to funding for new oil and gas exploration and development. And you have, uh, you have of course, some some activists that were that were being vocal in terms of even accusing and highlighting to corporations and governments of greenwashing and not going far enough. And I, I think this will be something that, that raises its head again as well outside of COP as people press uh, companies to, to achieve their ambitions or what they have said they were going to achieve. And I think that leads well into the next question as COP26 was a highly anticipated global event, and many of the public were critical that it did not go far enough or make enough progress in limiting global warming. So did you see a disconnect between the private sector and the governmental negotiations? From the discussions I saw anyway, the, the corporations are all becoming very focused on sustainability, particularly on limiting carbon emissions, and this goes all the way through their supply chain. And there was broadly a feeling that the corporate initiatives are catching up and potentially even overtaking government action on climate mitigation. Some governments obviously cannot make uh, some of the pledges and commitments and they're not going far enough. But there was a, a real highlight from various corporations that they are planning to step up or have stepped up and are, are making their own commitments to, to change. John Kerry, in particular, highlighted corporate activity as, as one of the greatest potentials for success as companies look to provide new technologies and work on improvements going forward. There are a number of technologies that have been introduced and developed, but have not necessarily reached full scale. And I think one of the, once those do start to reach full scale, they, you will start to see them having major impact with regards to that carbon, carbon pledge. Lastly, there does seem to be still a, a bit of a disconnect between the stakeholders involved in climate mitigation. For example, a company may tell a customer one thing in terms of the, its marketing with regards to the, its uh, greenness, may tell its employees another thing, and then investors and, and yet another. And it does still add to the questions about greenwashing and reputation. And I think as a result, it's important that transparency gets included which was again a, a key part of the discussions was around how to be more transparent and to be consistently producing the same information from company to company to make them comparable and hold them accountable. Yeah, and, and as you mentioned, you attended a keynote address from John Kerry, the U.S. Special Envoy on Climate. Was there anything else you spoke about that caught your attention? Uh, yeah, he highlighted the, the U.S. returning towards the Paris ag Agreement. It's been difficult to pass climate legislation through the U.S. Congress, but, but overall, he was optimistic and confident that Biden will continue to make strides going forward on, on climate mitigation. He also highlighted that despite all of the negative press towards China and Russia, that they are still making progress, it may not be as quickly as we, we want or, or the rest of the world wants, but they are making more of an effort. John Kerry and the Chinese climate envoy announced that the countries would better cooperate in the global efforts to decarbonize, with Kerry in particular noting that cooperation is really the only way to get this done. So taking a positive spin in terms of the negotiations that are ongoing and making sure that we are, we meaning the rest of the world, is still in negotiations with China and Russia and keeping them in terms of discussion around progress. Kerry said it's been a long journey since the first COP. He said it feel, felt a bit more advanced with greater ambitions, more, a more positive attitude, uh, and a great rate of adoption of the various initiatives that have been started. He was highlighting that there is more of a sense of urgency, uh, as in maybe in earlier COPs, it was a feeling that, oh yes, this is something that is we do need to pay attention to, but it's long term, a long while away. Whereas he feels like now that there is a lot more recognition that there is a need to do something more rapidly. Even if we're, the progress may still be slow, there is a, a growing sense of urgency amongst those that were in the discussions. 
He also emphasized the progress on the, the methane pledge um, as a very positive step that will go a long way to help limit greenhouse gas emissions and that the potential benefits of that are quite, are, are quite high. He brought up as well the efforts on stopping global deforestation. At the event, there was a more than 100 countries pledging to reverse and end deforestation by 2030, including Brazil, Canada, Russia, Indonesia, and covering about 85% of the world's forests. He also added that financial instruments and investment efforts are important to accelerate the deployment of capital. And the only way to do this is bring the private sector to the table. And the one area universally viewed as a real success this year was the movements made and planned with the private sector and also in particular, the involvement of the financial sector into this, uh, into this uh, call. Yeah, so technology and innovation, as, as well as corporate climate commitment, were definitely a highlight of the event. And I think that's a great way to wrap up this episode and, and end on a positive note. Hopefully, the momentum around COP26 will continue. And thank you very much for your time and your insights, Gordon. Thank you very much. Thank you to Andrea and Gordon for a very interesting discussion. Please email esg at kbra.com with any questions or comments. We also encourage you to visit KBRA's ESG website at esg.kbra.com, where you can find ESG research related to the topics discussed in this episode, further details on KBRA's ESG approach, and other ESG-related media items. You can also join our mailing list to access our ESG weekly roundup newsletter. This concludes our episode. New episodes of ESG Talks air every other week. In the meantime, please visit kbra.com to access our other podcast series, as well as our ratings and research.